Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the mini LCS quarterfinals third game between Okami Gaming and Kaled's Keys. Now, as you can see, we are already in the books and bats nice and quick. Okami have banned out the Jax and the Zed, KLK have banned out the Cogmore and the Hecarim. So, both sides not really favouring a top lane or an AD carry or at least a very heavy AD focused champion on the other side. The Cockmore's been a more recent ban as of late with recent patch changes making him a bit more viable than what he used to be. And now we can see that Nautilus has been banned out from the side of Okami, so they obviously don't want any more cheeky um, support roles coming out from Trial. And those Death Charge Dredge Lines assistance is certainly something they don't want to go up against with whatever they intend to pick. Just seeing what KLK was secure for the last one. It is going to be a malfight, so they are denied hard engage and Okami straight away giving Volcano Combat his preferred role of Darius. Something he's been fairly proud of of late. Now, and of course, he is looking to secure the vein and locks it in rather swiftly, so definitely a huge bonus there. As I also see the Lulu is being hovered over. It's certainly a choice, and it is going to be a Lulu locked in, so that could be a support Lulu. It could be a mid Lulu. It could even be a top Lulu. Oh heck, it could be even be a jungle Lulu. Lulu is, Lulu is so flexible at the minute. It's a bit hard to decide when to place her. So we'll see what Okami's going to pick up here. Barney's looking at the Leona. That's a fair assumption to make. Although he's now deciding to go for the uh, Blitzcrank and Prince Salem is looking to secure himself a lease in. It wasn't banned away, it wasn't taken away either, so he's certainly got plenty of opportunity to use it if he so chooses. And I wouldn't be too surprised if he goes for it either. It's certainly uh, proved him well in the past, and the uh, recent games that he may have had, he's still just debating it with his team. And it is going to be locked in. It's also going to be a Blitzcrank support as well. So. Obviously they're going to need something to combo well with it, they have lost the vein, so maybe a Callista could be quite good. And then we'll wait and see what um, Zuko will take for Olympicos. And it looks like it's going to be a Shen, so it might even be a Shen support. There's so much flexibility on the side of Kellen's keys. Of course we should reiterate right now at this point that the winner of this game will go on to the semi-final match against Titans. At some point, at the time of recording, anyway, on Saturday. So next week, pretty much. Well, this coming Saturday, which I believe put us on the sixth. I want to say no, the fifth. I'm a day out. See, leap years. Leap years on their leap days got me all thrown out of whack. So it is going to be a shown by the look of it. Zucro still debating with his team. It's certainly going to work well. And 299 going back onto the Shivano as a fallback, fallback option. Personally, I would prefer an Elise or maybe a Sejuani. We've seen some good Sejuani so far. Uh, if I recall, it is from the Lee Syndrome games. Jirachi, though, is going to insta lock in the luck, so obviously looking to pressure all ever trial had plans for that Lulu, but I suspect there is going to be a support Lulu. And Page Man and a good secure Lucian. It's actually a fantastic pick up Blitzcrank. It will complement Lucian's range and combos very, very nicely. And Merchant is going to take himself a free choice of uh, Twisted Fate, possibly. Yep, locked straight on in. So, there you go, there are your picks. So, it's going to be Twisted Fate versus Lux in the mid lane, Lucian Blitzcrank versus Vayne Lulu in the bot lane. Top lane, looks like it's going to be Volcano versus Shen, or it could be. Uh, Darius versus a Lulu. We'll have to see where those flex picks go. I suspect there's going to be a Lulu support and uh, top lane shank because Zuko is running teleport. So Zuko is going to go into that top lane and the jungle is going to be Quenchy 99 on the Shivana and Prince Salem is going to be running the Lee Sin. So very, very top picks here and then we shall just. Head into the game once this timer ticks down. Money wise, though it must be said at this point, uh, my money is on Okami. I mean, that composition is looking very, very good. Though they are picking 
specifics, they're not really going for any hard engage. So KLK may have the upper hand during a team fight at this point. Uh, we shall now go into the game. 30 seconds in as always, or as close as we can to get. It is going to be a Lulu support, as I said, so Shen is going to be right about that top lane. And Okami going very, very aggressive here, actually going with a level 1 invade. Although it is only four members, Pinsayam coming in from the bottom there on the very fancy Shen as we just go rid of the chat box. There we go, all nicely done. Uh, Bardi is going to hang about. So we're going to sit there and talk for a little while on the Blitzcrank. And, uh, yeah. This game's looking to be a very early start. No aggression coming out, though, from Okami. They want to play this safe, after all. This is the game to lose or to win. Of course, to go on to the semi-finals, get that delicious bonus RP. Merchant takes a little bit of a poke and a little bit of harass. It doesn't reveal what he's picked up as his first ability, though. It's already revealed what Lee Sin will go to. He's taking his sonic wave. Shavana's going to take the flames nice and early. It does give us a nice wave clear. And you can see Lulu using a nice shield drop. Twisted Fate is obviously going for his nice pick a card. And he can't. Don't be shy. It's not going to hurt you that much. And the junglers, meanwhile, are just going to swap buffs by the look of it. Shavana's opting not to go for blue and go straight for the bramble back first. Whereas Lee Sin will be getting his bramble's and then going for his own jungle clear. So maybe bumping into Shivana that little bit sooner than she would like, and it will be very difficult to deal with. Elsewhere though, this bot lane looking to be fairly stable. Bane still has a hard time. Oh, I've got some indigestion from somewhere. Excuse me. Oh. Okay, so Vayne has got some early game problems. She always has, but she's been much more of a late game hyper carry at any rate. And this top lane with the Shen into a Darius doesn't make a huge amount of sense, although Shen has become remarkably tanky. And question 9 9, I want to go super aggressive onto Jirachi, wanting to deny. Uh, any early kills to Ignite will probably pick up First Blood here, although Prince Sam could get it. First Blood though is going to go to Merchant and he's going to get a double kill off the back of it as well. So he gets a double buff on top of it. So he's going to have a very, very nice early start to this game with two kills under his belt and now he's going to start forging out a CS lead as well. Red buff and blue buff are going to give him plenty of aggression, plenty of mana regeneration as well, so he can actually go ham if he so chooses on his abilities. And rely on the blue card less and less. He's very calf wave clear. Instead, he's going to go straight back. He's going to buy himself a couple of biggies. He's going to buy anything else for that early goal. I'd be too surprised if he decides to buy a second Doran's ring. And nope, goes straight into Catalyst. So that's going to be a rod of ages. Nice and early for Twisted Fate, which is something you really don't want to see. As a Twisted Fate getting health, mana, and ability power pretty early on. It's going to be pretty hard to deal with. So that could be the beginning of the end for Okami Gaming, although we've seen them come back from worse. They've had worse starts than this and managed to pull it out of the bag. I have to wait and see this mid lane though. It is certainly starting to, uh, this mid lane, sorry, this bot lane is certainly starting to prove somewhat good with uh, trial taking quite a lot of damage, but it's certainly showing us the combo that uh, Blitzcrank and Lucian can have. Let's pull them in, Lucian then gets Nice easy targets for his abilities. Certainly we'll be able to catch him in piercing light and ardent blaze for him to start frocking all that extra damage. Now we need to see what this top lane will do. It looks to be quite the far fest as always. Darius though getting a huge advantage over the Shen, almost doubling his CS at this point. Now Prince Adam and Jirachi want to get revenge really. The merchant's gonna be very hard to pin down. And all that aggression only really yielded him down to about half HP. If that Zuko is taking quite a bit of damage in this top lane, so we'll have to wait and see which fight's going to break out first. Could it be the mid lane fight? Or is it going to be the top lane? Quite you know, when I starting to roam up there, he's going to get his hands on the Scuttle Crab. Actually, no, this doesn't 
Ignore the scuttle cab entirely. I oh, think it'll judge by that portrait movement. Nope, he is going to go for the scuttle cab, so he's going to get some vision through the Zuko in that top lane for the meanwhile. And also keep an eye on uh, Salen's jungle roots, because if he starts counter jungling, he will know with that uh, scuttle crab placement. And it will also know if he attempts any ganks up into the top lane. He's going to get plenty of warning. He's going to retreat back into his own jungle. For the sake of safety, he will. Elsewhere, though. All is quiet on the rift. Two kills already, though, for Twisted Fate at the 6 million mark. So he's doing very, very well. And when he gets up to level 6, manages to get the gold card as well into Volcano using the Destiny. Can't quite get away in time. Does manage to get out of there, though. He is forced to burn a flash, so Volcano's going to be down a flash for the next team fight. But now Okami know full well what level Twisted Fate is at now. He's at level 6 and it's going to be very difficult to deal with, so this pressure now is going to have to come from this bot lane. Benjamin Mellon going full on aggression. Doesn't quite get any burst out. It does force the summon to heal out of trial and a flash as well, so two summoners for one here in the bot lane. Barley still has Flash Exhaust available, Melon still has his heal, and he's certainly going to push KLK's bot lane onto the back foot. Prince Salem nearly dies to the dragon, but does secure the first dragon and tries to even out the gold lead at this point, which is only a few hundred gold, but taking that dragon nice and early is going to give a nice advantage for his team, giving him a nice little uh, attack boost. If I recall, that is the price for a first dragon. And I just need to wait and see where KOK will roll with this. They have got two kills. They're farming up really well, must be said. Uh, even though they are losing the top lane, the mid lane is inching out ahead. And their jungle actually has quite a bit of CS as well. But it's all really down to these last second decisions this is early game plays will map out the rest of the game Benjamin and the Bardley though really well the country 99 is in their jungle lands a lot of aggression it's forced to flash out of Bali but doesn't quite snag the grab so as uh, some of wasted but at the same time uh, quite the bonus to them by denying Shivana a red steel and keeping it in their hands for the time being see what Volcano Combat can do in this top lane. That Woe Dairy skin doesn't really look the best, if I'm honest. Just sitting here watching it. Uh, I don't know why, just doesn't seem to impress as much as uh, previous skins of Darius. I'm much more a fan of his uh, Dunk Master skin, if I'm honest. Mainly for the uh, interaction that it has with Vado. There you go. I believe I've forged Jirachi, so he's going for his own mana regen and cooldown. Does it appear to be going for the 40% cooldown build though? Looks like to be going for a more AP heavy build. Relying more on team fights and versatility, though we'll have to wait and see what he builds at this point in time. It is only a Fiendish Codex, it's not any uh, Athena and Holy Grail yet. Now Zuko taking a fair bit of damage, Salem also coming in from the side, can he land the Sonic Wave instead? Doesn't need to, Volcano will happily take that for himself using the Noxian Guillotine to secure the kill, so Salem not even getting assist, but will get a uh, participation medal as Barley denies Merchant's uh, amazing Destiny Gold Card combo by just yanking him away at the last second, although the Gold Card will land and the random spray of cards will pick up his third kill of the game. And I completely forgot uh, Twisted Fate's E for a second there, so uh, apologies for that, I really should know better. And that's an interesting bug from the sweeper. I never noticed that before. If, if you pause it back then, you'll notice that whenever it picked up Lee in the brush, it picked him up in his recall animation. Um, I don't know if that's a thing or what. That's going to require some... Uh, some digging and some testing. I have to wait and see. The merchant's only doing very well in this mid lane. He's already starting to 
ink out a 20 CS lead over the Lux, so that could change though very quickly. If Lux is going for a CDR build, she'll be able to do loose and singularities through the lane, take a nice few fair kills. Of course, though, for Okami, they're relying on for Kano Combat to dominate his top side and get some aggression on. Maybe secure the Rift Herald if need be. They get the improvements from the Void to start taking down uh, this top lane tower and take down Zucra as well, who's barely surviving here. It's actually taking quite a lot of damage as now. Merchant will be able to take down Prince Sam, and it's going to be crunchy that secures the credit for that one. Kato Supreme land the gold card in time, or will Crunch be able to get that last hit? Smite does come through, but the barrier will keep Jirachi alive for just a tiny bit longer. If Twisted Fate had the pick a card available, be able to swing it on through and pick up a few kills for himself, but instead it is just going to be now full of aggression onto this tower, which will be the first tower of this game as well, a very early 11 minutes. So now we're just waiting to see what Okami can do to respond. They could go for another dragon, and it will be up in a minute or so. It will give them uh, a bit of a bigger bonus than last time. So they give them more gold, and it will certainly bring them back into the game here. But it looks like they're not going to have an opportunity for this as Khaled's Keys now go straight in and pick themselves up a Riptold, and they appear to be giving it over to Twisted Fate. Which is an unusual choice, as his lane is pushed all the way through. Let's see if they're planning a lane swap scenario and have him come to the bot lane. To try and lay some grasses. Estrada takes a lot of damage, the piercing light comes all through. It isn't going to be enough, but there will be a color that picks off Olympicos. Zucro does come in with the Stand United. Bokeno quickly follows it along with a teleport. And Parley actually gets to use the chase right into the lane here. His merchant takes a lot of damage. Pritain doesn't quite get the Sonic Wave Brock as he does get caught down with the gold card. Now Zucro is left to face Bellin and Volcano Combat under the tower. He could hold on for that little while longer. And the minions are getting two shotted. And he is going to hold the line but just barely. If Volcano and Bellin really want to they can continue harassing this lane and keep pushing it down but instead they're going to back off entirely here. And Kellen's Keys now looking to secure Dragon number one for themselves. Get them on their Dragon score count. And on the way to the big five for a win here. As Olympicos continues to charge. Down through the lane. Doing actually quite a nice job, must be said, on this vein. It's not a massive. CS difference, although hasn't got any kills to her name yet, doesn't have any deaths either, nor assists, but is going to be on the Blade of the Rune King soon enough, which is something to fear from the vein. Uh, Barley there getting shapeshifted into a fluffy dragon, which makes no sense whatsoever, but hey, it's the lead, once it goes out the window. But it will get the Walking grab and the knockup, and Bellend will secure himself his second kill of the game. It did take all five members though to take out the Lulu. Could they be able to snag away Dragon in time? Nope. A very quick smite from Crunchy99 will secure it. In a very nonchalant fashion. Does we'll see Ultimate over the wall as Zucro now starts hammering away at the minion wave in the top lane. So he's going to be uh, very. Uh, dangerous to deal with if he's left unchecked for a little while longer. So Volcano's going to have to get back into that lane pretty sharp or they're just going to have to send someone over there as this tower is likely to fall if they're not careful and Okami really can't afford any loss of momentum at this point. They did really well by taking out the Lulu. They need to continue the pressure. They could have gone for the Dragon they really went for it but instead opted not to and because of that they did lose the dragon, but they also gained a kill out of it, but really it was on a Lulu, which isn't a massive kill. Oh, such a difficult position. And it took all five members to secure it as well. I think they may get they have gotten a little uh, bloodthirsty here, though Volcano likes that kind of bloodthirst on Darius. Darius likes to be in the fray, likes the smell of war. And he's 
probably some distant relation to Scion, no doubt. Both have a love of axes, both have a love of war. Both really don't trust the people in charge as well. So we'll wait and see. Hey, Destiny coming out from Twisted Fate. It's going to be a very nice knockout from Harley and even gets the static shockwave down, but it is not enough to save the Lucian. It is going to push him somewhat on the back foot. Quenchy no, no, no does find turn, but he is forced to Sonic Wave and Insect Hop over the wall, but it's not going to be enough. There's a red buff ticking away. It is going to be a quick kill pickup, possibly. No, he's actually going to survive. As the camera goes wild there, uh, Prince I don't know. There you go, you can see him under the tower, he's taking so much damage. And there we go, it is going to be the Twisted Fate pickup. And Barley is also going to go down. He is going to start taking up this tower. And now it is four members of KOK in the spot lane. There is no dragon to take, but there is certainly a big chunky tower that can do with coming down. Giving them some map pressure. Getting their second tower of this game so obviously this is going to be their play though in terms of play around the dragon deny okami any advantages here as beta melon and olympicos now go into a skill face off but it is going to be beta melon on the back foot obviously lucian is not quite as nimble as the vein can't quite get away in time as question 99 now starts going aggressive against jirachi but barcado does come down he's really given Crunchy 99, something to think about here, but Merchant is going to come in, he has got the gold card ready, can he snag it? Doesn't look like it's going to be the case, and KLK now collapse onto their second Rift Herald of the game. So that's going to be a nice, easy pick up for them here, Merchant doing a very good job of playing Harass, and yeah, the, he actually picks up the buff for it. Again, it seems to be a weird choice. I personally would have given it over to Zucro, who is currently pushing in a top lane himself. So he's going to have minions to buff. And he's going to have boots to fill. And room to sort of continue that pushing and advantage as well. With the additional DPS that it gives. It certainly makes it a lot more viable, but... Uh, who am I to question the choices of the plays here? Merchant though. Could decide to destiny up and start top lane and give Sucro a hand. Volcano Combat is looking to come up here and sort of make Sucro answer for the damage he's done to his nice pristine tower. It's been untouched with the majority of this game. It's certainly looking the case now. We could see the destiny pop. And there we go. It is going to come on through. He is going to land the gold card at the last second. It is going to be Volcano going down, possibly. Gets an oxygen guillotine. There we go. Sucro will secure that one. As Beta Melon now does secure the tower with the help of the minions, he's forced to run away from Crunchy 99. Very nice last second flash to try and get out of the way, but it isn't going to be enough. And it's going to put him on a killing spree as Salem now comes up to try and defend this top lane tower. He doesn't realise that Merchant is hiding just in the brush, and he's going to be very, very careful. One gold card could spell his end, but so could a red card. And he could be sent off for misbehaviour and. Disorderly conduct, that's... Oh, no, that's a terrible thought, actually. Twisted Fate playing referee. No, you, you just wouldn't win. You just keep pulling out red cards from the entire deck. Elsewhere, though, Blitzcrank does score Okami's second tower for this game in the mid lane. So Okami, not one to sit idly by and let KLK walk all over them. And Salem does pick up a shutdown onto the Shivana, so he's got himself a nice big bouncy from that. Now Olympicos and Trial are going to be very careful here. As you can see, Barley's coming in from one side. It is going to be a flank. It goes in with the speed boost. Unfortunately, it doesn't get very far with it. It does get condemned as the wall. The static Shockwave does come down. Unfortunately, doesn't mute any key abilities. He misses with the grab. That could have been vital as the Wild Growth does get popped onto Olympicos and along with the Blade of Rune King active and saps away Lucian's chances of victory. He gets a triple kill. So, very nice turnaround there for Olympicos. Manages to get three after a failed three man attack. Of course, shout out for Trial to give him the wild growth for that last possible second there just to survive a little while longer. And now Jirachi, oh my god, nearly gets two shotted just from a gold card and a spray of the cards there. That's really putting Okami on the back foot. Although it is currently 13 kills for 4 in favour of KLK at this point, 6,000 gold lead 
two towers and two rift holds as well and they're looking to make it another dragon and a baron as well baron is up and available though okami able to swing back around the manage to pick themselves up a couple of quick kills from the minion wave and it is going to be dragon number two for KOK and they're going to start taking down the rift hold the rift hold the boy scut there not the boy scut the rift scuttler get it right just to keep their vision control in top notch which they have a lot of of course they got wards everywhere about the map they are starting to time out though so they have lost some vision in the bot lane but they know that somebody is down there country nine is going to have to be very very careful this could be quite bad. He's getting a little bit greedy going for the battle back, although imagine very quick to dive in with the Destiny. Zucro now looking to get aggressive onto Volcano Combat. Noxian Guillotine does come through and will secure him the kill. And now Olympicos going for his own red. And Jirachi looking to secure the blue by his own means. Although if he's not careful, he is going to proc the Patience Timer and instead he's not going to get much more than that. Quanchi 99 coming on through as well, so Volcano is going to be in a bit of trouble here as Olympicos comes on through through the minion wave, forces Volcano to the back foot, manages to get the three silver procs. Can he get another batch? Yes, he can. That will help him secure the kill nice and quick. And a very nice static shiv proc as well, though, with the tumble spreading out the damage. And now Bardley is going to be in a spot as well. The Quanchi 99, though, does kick Jirachi straight into a dragon dive. Doesn't get much more of it, at least it kicks. Crunching right through the wall, puts it and spells the end for Bardley. The gate will save you, but once someone's the other side of the wall, you're not really safe. You're just sort of running from one evil to another. And now KOK okay, okay, continues their pushing. They managed to pick down one inhibitor to the tower. They can go for the inhibitor as well, taking out the mid lane from this fight entirely. They actually could close this game out as well. And they've certainly got the aggression for it as Vayne manages to take out the in a tower in the top lane, Jirachi there trying her best to clear the waves and really that's all that CR cooldown can do is just wave clear but only if the rest of the map is going well unfortunately it isn't going so well here as Merchant comes on through for saying tries to get a couple more hits down looking for a gold card, he is going to get picked up by Bajan Melon and it is going to be a kill for Jirachi so that's going to be a nice big shutdown for Jirachi that might actually save him here. So Olympicos does get caught out. The light binding will secure the kill. And another shutdown for Jirachi. So that's really good news. That's a six and five kill streak shutdown. That's a huge amount of gold available. But a Baron for KOK does give them so much more to work with. These means in our Baron buff. Zucro is pretty much near unkillable at this point. Although we'll see what Volcano can do about it. A few bits of armor shred will see to that. Although, looking at Zuko's build, he's just got war mogs, he's got uh, the build for a sunfire cape going, he's got a kill the gem, double red, so he's just building a lot of health and not much else. There must be a fair bit in his rune master, he's dedicated to armor and magic resist. If he's able to survive this much punishment and hopefully secure something out of it. Uh, as you can see, Lux is going to recall back to base. And there we go, straight into a Luden's Echo from an EDC Large Roto. Obviously, having the best of times. As Crunchy99 carries on the aggression in the bottom, he goes for Barbie. Wall, not Dragon Form into the fray. It's a little bit afraid of Jirachi's Light Bindings, although Trial is on hand, so it could provide a nice Wild Growth knock up combination as soon as she lands, which could be actually quite devastating, really. But we'll wait and see. They're looking now to collapse onto Olympicos on the vein. And they might actually get it as well. Forces a flash from all sides here as Major Melon now goes on through. And Jirachi now turns it around. Looks to try and take down Major Melon with the help of Merchant and Zucro. But it is not to be. He does flash away. But Prince Salem will take a lot of damage from that triple combo. As the Bottom lane inhibitor turret falls and looks like to be a bottom lane inhibitor as well. Granting trial. Both very strong and very, very aggressive. More than willing as Rachi goes straight on in for the aggressive. And there we go. The Mild Growth combo does allow for a knockup and a double kill for Shivana. This is actually a really good game here from KOK. 
They're currently 19 and 7 here, and they're looking to close the game out nice and quick. Putting themselves up a few more kills. Two Nexus Towers going on. This is going to be the Nexus. This is going to be a damn quick game here. And Merchant really not giving a darn about Jirachi on the tower. He will get down, but unfortunately, Okami and out. Out of the mini LCS3. And it's going to be KLK versus Titans on Saturday. So, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to like, favorite, subscribe, and all that YouTube jazz. And I'll see you for the semi-final matches.